So yeah, um, after like six months, which I think, like, it's been almost like, what, half a year since we finished the playthrough, but yeah, we're finally uh, going to talk about our final thoughts. Um, now this is probably going to be kind of all over the place, there's no, we have no script or structure for this, we're kind of just going to go, um, go wild, I guess. Um, just talk about everything. How funny, script, how funny. Yeah. <laughs> so... I guess to start with, um, I guess we should start talking about how we feel about the story for the game. Because uh, I have very, like, mixed things to say about it. But I want to, I don't know, I want to hear what you, f what, you hear, uh, what you think about it first. Just everything. Oh. Hmm. Well, okay, I, got a, a t I had music going on in the background, so now I got to gotta think. <laughs> <laughs> um... Let me think. <laughs> because it's like, as a, I t I'm trying to think of it as a finale for like for what we got so far. Yeah. Because as a finale for the Xehanort saga, I think it does work r rather well. Mm. Like just like the finale itself, rather. You know, like finally having a, uh, finally this bung guy's been basically been our big antagonist all this time is finally gone. <laughs> yeah, I do I just, like that. Uh, this is gonna kind of be like a little weird to say out loud. Hey, weird to think about because uh, a lot of people kind of like trying to like, misunderstand what his what it hey, what's about the ending. Right, yeah, we've talked a lot about that, like, off-screen, and I think we might have mentioned it on camera, um, but the whole thing of, uh, like, Xehanort, um, being redeemed or something is not the point of that, like, final cutscene. Like, he's not being redeemed, that's not, that's not what's going on there. Um, no, he's, he's trying to just, it's, it's more so he's just trying to justify his, his methods. Yeah. Um... So I, I like that uh, um, because it's more than just, oh, evil guy being bad for the sake of being bad. Right, it, that's not it. Um, and he like, did, yeah. He, the world is like too far gone and ha and thinks that everything needs to be basically reset. Yeah, and I, the thing that gets me is that everyone seems to have the impression that everyone just forgives Zayn for what he's done and they... I did not get that impression at, like at all. Um, I don't know where that com where that comes from. Like Ericus it's understandable because he like those two are like best friends for like the longest time. So they've been through like so much. Um, like the the <laughs> the others clearly don't forgive him. I I don't know. Like especially when you go to uh, Kyrie and. Melody of Memory, like, she talks about how Xehanort messed everything up for them. So it's like, you know. Right. Ericus has more of a, does have a connection to them, so it's more understood like he'd forgive them. Yeah. But, like, think, let's think about it more from Sora's perspective, because, you know, he, as far as, even, even though he ha he probably understands Xehanort a little better after, pro after, like, what he's probably heard about him, it mm -hmm. doesn't mean it's um. Uh, it doesn't mean what he's done is okay. He's still yeah. he's still planning on destroying, essentially destroying everything, just in in to to rede to reset things. That's not noble in any way. No. <laughs> um. Yeah, I. I don't know. Yeah, I that I do like the uh, a lot of the ending stuff. I like a lot of the um. um resolutions i guess with like all the uh, different trios and whatnot um i have very mixed feelings about the general story of kh3 as a whole though it gets a lot of things right uh like it's so close to being like one of if not the best like story in the series but it does stumble in a in a few areas like i like that um so like young xehanort is in like toy box trying to figure out um how to like have a like get a puppet with a heart 
with like Shion and whatnot. And then there's, I don't know I I like when the organization are in like in the worlds do like trying to do a specific thing, um, but I some sometimes it's a little bit like. Nothing. Sometimes the organization just feels sorry, but sometimes the organization just feels like they're just there to keep Sora out of the story. Yeah, sometimes it's like sometimes they do good things with the organization, and other times it feels really like forced and like there's nothing, there's no point to it. With um, mainly the Chain of Memories like organization members like Larkseen and Malusha, like right because in um uh, in Corona and in Arendelle, all Mar all. Really, all that Larkseen and Marlou should do is just fight, ha give something for Sora to fight, or just to keep him away from stuff, you know, from whatever the main Disney plot is doing. Yeah, um, and I feel like that's the like, main... yeah, yeah, because like it's like part, it's like nobody show up. Sora tells them the tells the Flynn and um uh, Rapunzel to run just just so like we could have Sora just fight stuff. Yeah. But it's a it's a contrast between uh, with um like KH two because I feel like the the reason why I enjoy the KH two story so much is because like the organ organization like are in the it's in their best interest to mess with Sora to make him fight more heartless, um mm -hmm. so it feels like there's actually some like some important stuff going on, whereas with um KH three if the if an org member is in a is like not in a world for a specific purpose, like, they're just there to mess with Sora, it feels kind of empty, because they know, you know, like, at the end of the game, they're gonna have to have the, uh, the clash with, like, the Seven Lights and Thirteen Darknesses, so there's no, like, they can't really mess with Sora, they can't have a fight with him, so it just kind of comes off feeling a bit empty, um, so I, I, I don't really know what they could have done. I don't know, because it just makes them feel there. It just feels, you know? Yeah. Cause they again, just spout some exposition and then just say lol and then go. Yeah, and I I feel like they had a... Like, I feel in uh, 2 as well, they had a better presence to them. Like, you could see how they were, like, actively messing up the worlds. I think Luke, uh, Luxord was a really good example of that. Um, and... I don't know, they didn't really do, like, interact with, um, the Disney worlds, or, like, in general that much, I feel. Right. They were just like kind the of there. Ones, it's only ones, the only organization members who mess up the Disney worlds are, are Young Xehanort, um, um, uh, who else? Uh, 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 Dark Riku. Oh, right. <laughs> and, uh, who was it again? Phineas. Yeah, Vanitas. Yeah, I think Vanitas is, like, one of the examples of where I, I'd say, like, like, this story is, like, being so close to just being one of the best. Because it's that's a very clever use of that world. Like, having the negative energy being what, like, reformed Vanitas, I guess. Um, that or that or attract, or that or just attracting the unversed. Yeah. That, that, that's a very clever use of, um, like, of that character and just making him like he, he was pretty much built for the monsters inc world um exactly and and, then, and and even then they're still having him like actively involved in the world in some way like how yeah you know he has something he act in fact he even pulls out his keyblade on sora yeah it's like it's um yeah that that scene in general is like pretty big so it's like mm. it again like this game has like specific moments where it's doing a lot of a lot of the right things, but then it also has a lot of like low moments where it's it <laughs> like everyone said everyone says how the 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 uh, this series has a lot of um, filler, which is true to to a degree, um, but I feel I don't know I feel like it gets it's probably it's it's probably it's probably like well like. It's probably at its most like offensive here. Yeah, that that's what that's what like has me conflicted about it because it's th this game has like the worst filler, but it also has some of the some of the best um, use for 
the Disney worlds at the same time, so it's kind of this weird, like, thing. <laughs> I don't know, because it's, it's weird, because, like, the fill, like, using Cage, too, it's like, the th like, the filler there would just be something like, maybe, like, like, Return of Jafar's bit, or, like, heading back to, like, uh, Pride Lamps or something like that. Yeah. Cause, cause it just feels like, it just feels more like another enemy to fight at that point. Yeah, I feel but, like, yeah, Cage... But at the same time, then we go back to Kingdom Hearts 3, but, like, I guess, because, like, this is the first time you do it, at least you've done something. Here, it's, like, mm -hmm. your your first and only visit just feels kind of pointless. Yeah. And I feel like even with, like, the more filler stuff in KH2, it's still, there's still, you still have the knowledge of, like, killing Heartless is helping the organization. So it feel, it still feels like there's something to care about. Um, right, because Sora doesn't have a choice, so he, he has to fight over what is going to defend the world, even yeah. though you know it's going to help uh, the organization in the long run. Yeah, and I, and then you get, like, the mid, like, middle portions, like, the stuff in Hollow Bastion and space paranoids and like all the stuff happening with like Kari and all the others and whatnot um and I, I feel like those cutscenes are spaced out at, at a good pace so there's you don't have you don't usually have to wait too long for something to happen um cage free I do I do at least like the fact that there's the in-between cutscenes where you see like Riku um Kari and Axel or Lee in the tie it was it the um um little training area thing whatever <laughs> but the, tra the, tra the hyperbolic time chamber Hyperbo if you will <laughs> hyperbolic time chamber yeah i i like that stuff i do feel like the game is kind of at odds with itself in terms of what it wants to tell in terms of a story because i feel like s there are points in the game where it feels more worried about telling the story after KH3 rather than KH3 story itself. Like, there's a lot of uh, things going on that have to do with the mobile game, and... Hey, your harpy, your guiding key. Yeah, well, there's that, but there's just, I don't know, stuff with um, the girl that Axel and Syax apparently, like, try to rescue. Um, there's stuff about, like, some of the organization members apparently being from that era um and M maleficent and pete trying to find the box <laughs> like yeah but yeah. The, and then there's the star there's the star thing in in end of the world in the final world yeah which... and then there's obviously yozora once we talk if even when we bring the dlc into a, into account yeah because it, it's weird because on one hand i do actually really like that's that stuff but I kind of feel feel like this game should have been more focused on like telling its story because this should should have just been I feel the end of the Xehanort saga and just go full on, full on with that and worry about the future of the series after. Um, I only a memory probably should have done that more of it than anything. Yeah, I feel like that this stuff should have been saved for melody and memory because at that point. Um, like, the Xehanort stuff is done, so you kind of need to, like, go into, like, new territory. I'm fine with, like, the epilogue showing, like, Zigbar is actually Lucia and the Foretellers coming back. Like, that's fine. I don't mind that's, there being... Yeah, yeah that's, that's more of a, of a preview of things to come. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Um, and... I don't know. I just feel like the the story is just messy in a lot of ways. It, it does a lot of things right, but also it does a lot of things wrong. Um, when it focuses on the Xehanort story, it does it fine. Yeah, I just feel but like there's too it's, much of like there's too much of four plus, if you will. Yeah, it is. It just feels like it doesn't really know what it wants to do sometimes. <laughs> but when it when it is good, it is really good. I think. Mm hmm. But I, I mean, this is. I guess I should point this out. This is being recorded after Kingdom Hearts Four got announced, but we'll save that discussion for way later down the road. But for maybe now, after also when we uh, talk, maybe also when we eventually get the melody and memory for the channel. Yeah, I was gonna mention what was gonna happen with that game by the, at the end of this, but yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about Kingdom Hearts Three story. I. 
<laughs> I do find it kind of funny that they uh, put in the the um, was it the Final Fantasy crew in the DLC, but it felt very last minute. <laughs> like they, yeah. you you could tell that they just put them in because people like missed seeing them, but they don't really have much of a point. <laughs> But, it's funny when the only like yeah. Final Fantasy represent we get we got is the Moogles. Otherwise, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's nice to see them back again, like in full HD. Right. Oh yeah. One more thing is like, uh, it's not. It, it is good finally seeing like the 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 Dash trio and the uh, Birthright Sleep trio finally like they're back and they're fi and they're finally having a, a, a happy ending. Yeah, I I I do like the the like. It definitely doesn't. They've been through enough. Yeah, I will say it. De it definitely doesn't feel as like final as like Kingdom Hearts two, two's ending was. Like that, that ending. Like it, it, if you ignore the um, post credit scene where Mickey sends them a letter, I, I feel like you could just see the Kingdom Hearts two ending as just the finale of the series, and that would be satisfying. Um, like I don't think Kingdom Hearts three's ending. It, it's not trying to be the finale, so I guess it's fine in that way, but I do feel like it's satisfying in its own way. Um, and yeah, it's nice just seeing everyone, like, just playing together and not having to worry about anything. And then <laughs> Sora is the one that has to pay, pay the price, obviously, because main character. Right. But, you know. His adventure is never over. Yeah. I mean, I, I do also like like it because it shows how selfless Sora is. Like he he'll go to these crazy lengths for like all his friends, even at the expense of whatever huh? will end up happening to him. Um, mm. But yeah, I'm interested to see where the series goes after this. But again, we'll talk more about that in Melody of Memory, I guess. Right. So, I guess we're going on the game. Yeah, um, what do you want to discuss first? Um, because there's a lot of, like, different I think, things. Because I think, um, it, like, it is a good, like, natural evolution, I think, of, like, everything we've been up to so far. Yeah. Like, it takes a good bit of every, of what worked from most of, from most of the games, especially sticking to Kingdom Hearts 2. Mm-hmm. Like, adding stuff like the flow motion, or, like, uh, Bring back the summons, the links. Um, we gained the, and doing its own thing too, like the quick step or the attractions, which we sadly didn't show off that much. <laughs> yeah. I don't. Yeah, I haven't really seen anyone like really love the attraction stuff. Like it's cool for a little while, but it just gets like it just kind of gets in the way after a point. The spectacle is fine, but yeah, it was, that, that's part of the problem I think with Kingdom Hearts Three's combat. It's definitely a lot more. Style or er, style over substance. Yeah, that's um Osaka team's like problem in general. I've noticed in like all their games, they have a lot of style to them, but it's not always like they they don't always have the most substance. Because um, this is probably yeah. well, this is definitely one of their best goes at it at the very least. It's especially better after like the Remind DLC came out. Because I'm not even just talking about the the super bosses, but just the the um, new abilities they added to Sora and like the adding Oblivion and Oathkeeper, like the game got way more fun just from that update. Uh, because the I don't know, K Kingdom Hearts Freeze combat is fine, like I enjoy it well enough, but the um, base combos weren't the most satisfying. So with the um, update that came with Remind. They added a lot more abilities that sped up the flow of the game, and it just makes it so much more fun to play. Um, yeah. So they they definitely they've definitely learned a lot, and if they go beyond what like we've seen of them like from Remind and whatnot, then I feel like KH Four has the potential to be the, like the best game in the series in terms of combat. Because I still feel. As much as I do enjoy a lot of the stuff in free, I feel like two still has the best overall combat system in terms of the uh, flexibility and the choice, like the player choice. And what I, what I mean by that is that um, in Cage Free, there's a lot of stuff that just kind of happens. 
Um, like, you'll just be fighting Heartless and whatnot, and sometimes you'll get a team attack formation or whatever. And I don't know why they that couldn't have just been a, lim a separate option in the uh, command menu of just limits, like two. And there's just a lot of stuff like that in the game where it feels like you don't really have full control over your options. I'm fine with some of the uh, stuff they do, like having to build up the gauge to unlock your Keyblade transformations. I think that's fine. I don't mind that stuff because it's like birth by sleep, I guess. Yeah, but it's but it's something like but the limits on, on the other hand are just like uh, it's just like sometimes like sometimes like you're you're never really gonna see them if you're not lucky enough. Yeah, and apparently it's like there's just a bunch of weird invisible numbers to do with it. Like you have to be a certain like distance from your party members. They have to do enough damage to enemies, and obviously they have to be alive. And all this, all these like arbitrary like stipulations that will maybe make the team attack appear and it's just i don't know why it has to be like designed like that it's just so weird right as i said sometimes they kind of like need that in order to trigger certain things like the uh like those weird like sandworm heartless yeah teams, like goofy's like bomber and yeah and th th what's annoying is that the game specifically like uh gives you a hint like you used to goofy Bombardio, or whatever it's called, to kill the sandworm. Yeah, you just kill the sandworm immediately. But I, you can't control when it shows up, so it's kind of just a slap in the face. But, you know, right. I, yeah. <laughs> and the, the magic is also pretty fun to use, though, at the very least. But it also yeah. kind of overpowers a lot of stuff. Yeah, uh, like, magic in the, in the series has always been, like, pretty busted. <laughs> like, even starting from the first game. But, uh, yeah, I feel like they could have toned things down a little bit here, but it is, it is fun to use the uh, magic. I feel like... Um, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say, I kind of miss a, a spell like Magnet. Like, Arrow is a decent enough replacement, but it's also a bit unwieldy. Um, like, it's not as easy to um, trap enemies as, like, Magnet is. So sometimes you'll just... Not, I don't blow know. <laughs> yeah, you blow them away. You'll accidentally activate flow motion because you can. Like, yeah, because running into it, I'm actually make sure to do like the flow motion jump attack thing. Yeah, so it's it's not as easy to use as as a magnet would be, but I I I think it's a fine enough replacement, but it's just not as useful. Um, and water's a decent enough new spell. It's not amazing, but I I do really like the effect. I feel like there should have been a bit more of a reward for, like, using it for, um, getting through attacks, because the little, like, half a second you, like, use it, you are invincible, so I feel like there should have been a better reward, like, maybe you have, you do, like, 1.25%, like, times damage or something, um, mm. but it is, I mean, it's kind of cool that it's there, I guess. I don't think there's anything else. Oh, um, I know. I think it's. A, I think another thing about the ga about like gameplay is like uh, it can. Well, for well, we'll talk about exploration in a second because yeah. uh, something else I want to bring out is like, unless you're playing on crit, the game is like way too wee easy. Yeah, that was like one of one of my biggest issues playing playing this game uh, for the first time because I know it was like yeah. oh. You, more or less universal like thing where it's just like yeah the game it's fine but the game is too e is way too easy right? and then but some could argue that um uh, crit makes it e is a satisfying challenge or too hard yeah it's kind of funny i've mentioned i've mentioned this like off camera before but it's funny how kingdom Hearts 3 is arguably the easiest and the hardest game in the series at the same time <laughs> like i it's like two extremes like proud is just way too easy um like olympus is decently challenging for a first world but after that it doesn't really get any harder and the then the only thing yeah. that really puts up any kind of fight honestly is just is, it might as well just be toy box with the, if you don't use the gigases yeah pretty much <laughs> um the yeah and critical is like can get pretty ridiculous sometimes 
I remember Rob since he's in the middle of this crit run. He uh, tried to fight the Gigas without without a without his own, and it's just like first of all, I knew that was something he would try to do. <laughs> Secondly, it, it's like uh, I'm like oh, I'm like oh, let's see how bad this goes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's uh, definitely possible. I I do like that the Gigas can be like countered and you can knock them down, but they kill you so easily. It's not. It's barely even like worth trying. Right. You. Like, unless you're, like, one of those no-hit players or something. Yeah. I mean, it's not so bad, I guess, if there's only one of them, but the, when there's, like, three or four running around, there's, there's just no point. Yeah, like, in the lobby area of the building itself. Yeah. For instance, that, that room spawns, like, so many Heartless at once. Yeah. I do... Uh, I do also yeah. like the fact that, um, that you can have, like, three key Keyblades out at once, so... Um, one thing that it does, like, better than two, I guess, is the, is the fact that you can, like, theoretically have three transformations out at once, and you, you right. can also store right. them, so... Yeah, you, like, yeah. you can, like, get, like, uh, you can, you can grab, like, final form, switch off to, to a normal keyblade on, like, a different, uh, to, like, a normal form on another keyblade, then mm -hmm. build that up, switch back to the final, maybe, then switch back off of your call. It was also worth a good combo potential. Yeah, it also... Yeah, because you can also, like, mix and match uh, combos together with different forms, which it is, um... Really, a really cool, like, step forward for, like, combat. I do feel like the Keyblade switching should be, like... It, if they bring this back in 4, which I don't see why they wouldn't, um... I feel like switching Keyblades should be sped up a little bit because sometimes it's, it can be very easy for you to like whiff a combo just because Sora just took too long to switch Keyblade, Keyblades and all that. But I do... You know, it, it feels fast. Like it, it's like a phew. Yeah. I feel like if they just made it quicker and more like consistent, I guess, then it would be great. Because I, I feel like sometimes... You just have to like mash the left on right, like on the D pad, to to make it actually switch. It feels a little bit um, inconsistent in that way, but yeah, I really like the idea of it and the, the fact that you can like do crazy combos if you like, if you feel like being creative with it. And uh, yeah, I, I like most of most of the transformations. I do feel like there might be a bit of a uh, like after a point the the forms kind of feel a bit samey and i wonder if that's a case of like the of like game development issues of maybe the game was a little bit rushed in some areas because that like, you start with start the game you, ha you get second form you get the hercules one you get the Mirage stuff and all this other stuff. Which you learn are, about, and you'll learn about Rage for that matter. Yeah, you get all these stuff n near the start of the game that are all like unique Keyblades. Uh, or unique forms rather. And then and then you start getting like the key, like the repeats. Like both Arundel and uh, Monstropolis have Keyblade forms that are very, very similar. And then you have like Toy Boxes and... Uh, Frickin' what was it? I think that was Monstropolis. Or are you talking about maybe uh like like the classic keyboard or whatever that is? Yeah, that one. Yeah, those two are similar. And then there's the um there's the keyblade you get from doing all the, all of uh, Remy's stuff. That's a copy of the yeah, Hercules one. And this is keyboard. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know. I don't know if, like, they just ran out of time to, like, do more unique forms, but I feel, I, I feel mean, like, I'll, yeah. I'll give it this, at least the, the Ratitude Keyblade, at the very least it does have, like, it, like, these have different effects, it does have, like, you know, a few new, different kinds of animations and such, and, yeah, it's, it's, it's a less offensive version of it. Yeah, I do, I do like that they add, like, some some of their own like flair to it like i like how the classic kingdom has all the um like old disney the cartoon black and white yeah the black and, and white yeah that's that stuff's cool and i like how every keyblade has a different shot lock as well right but like, like, yeah like, even like the, the copies had their own unique one 
Yeah. Speaking of uh, short locks, I I also love the fact that the who, like whoever whoever thought of like adding air step air step to the to the game like needs a raise because that alone makes the combat so much more fun. Uh, yeah, like. Like, even if I'm not good at doing it, like, myself in the middle of combat, at the very least, I do appreciate how it's, like, how fast it makes things, or, like, yeah. uh, how, and, like, you can close the gap, and just how close, you can close the gaps in certain situations. Yeah, it's very, it's a very good uh, gap closer, especially, especially for, like, pre, for, like, remind, like, update, because, like, Sora's combos a lot of the time don't usually do the best job at like closing the gap on enemies so having air step really helps a lot for that um so yeah i i really hope the air step or at least some kind of equivalent like stays long term for this series because i just i can't imagine going back and not having it and also just being able to like use items in midair like that's also genius. Right. Hit there. <laughs> I think I think Osaka team like realized how floaty that their games tended to be and used that as more of a strength than a weakness. Because you arguably have more options in the air than you do on the ground. Like you can do like your regular air combo, you can air step, you can uh flow motion, you can block or like air dodge or whatever it's called and all this other stuff whereas you go back to like burp by sleep or dream drop and your options are like really limited in the air so it like just made those the problems in those games a lot worse so i like that they took a took an issue people had with those games and made it more of a strength um right because like because like this actually kind of like also ties into like the next like topic eventually is like how like it's a lot. It had it's a lot more vertical ish to like the level designs. Oh yeah, and, like some of these two. Yeah, I guess we should just move on to like level design stuff now, since you mentioned that. Right, because like part of the because like because like I'm so mixed on a level design. Yeah, <laughs> that, that like that pretty much. The worlds are are so cool to explore, but at the same time, they don't. They, it feels like uh, they're too wide. Yeah, the thing is with, with the level design in this game is that I think on your first playthrough it's like really cool how big the worlds are and like all this stuff going on. But when you like go back to think about it or like play it for another another time, it a lot of it kind of comes off as white noise if I'll be honest. Like there are moments of like really cool stuff. Now, I like the little underground part in uh, Corona. Um, and oh, like the mines, yeah, and all. Yeah, that. the mine. Yeah, I like that stuff. That's cool. Um, there's, I mean, Olympus in general is just, I think, one of the best worlds in terms of just in terms of the level design design because I feel like there's always something interesting going on in the world, and you don't spend too long in one area, and you have like cool stuff like the forge area and whatnot. And I feel like if right. the if the level design in the worlds was as good as that for throughout the whole thing, I probably would say that it has the best level design in the series, but it just. Uh, mm. I, part of me feels like another part of the problem is like, because like going back to Corona, it's like, it's like it's just like it feels like it's only two screens. Wait, like one yeah. of them is one giant screen, but it's like that's I don't feel like that works because like uh, kind of makes the thing too. It really makes it feel too big. Yeah, I feel like so, some a lot of the time it just feels like it's big for the sake of it. They don't usually make the best use of the space, and right because I yeah. think I convinced that well, I because like unless I'm remembering something wrong, I'm pr I'm pretty sure the entirety of Corona is just from the tower all the way to the entrance of the town itself, and then the town. I think so. Yeah, I think there's yeah there's only those what? two rooms. Um, they. Sorry. Yeah, so also going back to, like, the the actual uh, LP, because I was surprised how much I enjoyed, like, Monstropolis on my second run, because, like, when the game was, like, felt more focused and it wasn't so concerned with being, like, overly big for the sake of it, I felt like the level design was a lot stronger for it, because then it could, 
like focus on like this one specific path as much as possible to make it as like fun and fun as me and memorable as it can be and i feel like i feel like that world had a lot of fun little um set pieces and whatnot and i don't know i f i feel like i would have enjoyed the level design more if it was more focused uh if you will that sounds about right Somehow I feel sometimes it feels like uh that you'd be surprised how much a loading screen, like well I wouldn't say a loading screen but I'd say a segment segmented off spot can kind of make things stick out a little more. Yeah, like I'm not opposed to like more open level design, but I feel like if they do more of that, it needs to be they need to make better use of it. Cause the thing with like Ken Marks One for example, the worlds in that in that game. Like, if you just look at, like, how big the worlds themselves are, they're fairly small and compact. But what makes them feel big is the volume of things you can do there. And I feel like that should be focused on more. Uh, like, not necessarily how big the worlds are, but just how much stuff you can do in them. I feel like Scala in the DLC has the has the best idea for, for this, because I feel like that area is... It's big without feeling too overwhelming, and you have all the different puzzles you need to do to get, like, the pieces of Kyrie's heart and whatnot. And I want that kind of level design in the normal worlds, like, just random puzzles that you can find that gives you a chest or a random item that just, I don't know, it just feels nice to find. Right. And, uh... Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I just I'm like I'm like trying to think through it. And I'm just like, hmm. Yeah, I was also I also talked about this off camera as well. Like something I've noticed, like I don't know if I'd say this f like flat out nowadays because like what I what one thing I said off camera is that I feel like I might in hindsight prefer Dream Drop Distance's level design, and I don't know if I'd say that now but i feel like what caused me to say that in the first place is is the fact that the finding the chests in kin march 3 doesn't really like amount to much a lot of the time it a lot of the time you just find like the big map or like classic kingdom mini games or just random synthesis stuff and whatnot and it doesn't feel as rewarding it yeah it's not really that rewarding uh and then you go to dream job where like you never really know what you're what you're gonna get from a big chest you might get sonic blade or like another new ability or just other stuff and i feel I mean, like that's yeah, a lot more a big map now and then but it's not aim but it's just like it's not all there is yeah i i give a kind of tour pass because the level design is a lot more straightforward in that game so there's like finding the chest is not really difficult at all so I don't mind that too much, um, and then Kingdom Hearts One I feel like ha had the best idea for the three numbered games because you have like the you find all the uh, Dalmatians you get um, you you find the Trinity marks in the worlds you find like what was it you you can get you can find like the summons in like random chests and whatnot which is really cool I think and. I know you can even you even find keyblades a lot with just finding chests in one, and I I don't know I feel like they should just be more not necessarily daring but not be so scared to hide specific things from just like finding random chests around the world because I feel like that would make things a lot more rewarding if you got a, a big chest and you got like a new finisher or a new keyblade or or summon, or just anything like that. Uh, well, like, I, I'm not, I get the feeling their mentality was, like, all these finishing stuff are from the Keyblade finishers and such. Yeah. Uh, like, I kind of get that, since there is a lot of them, especially for individual, like, uh, Keyblade transformations, but... Yeah. You know, it's also, like, uh... Like, we liked finding those. 
Yeah, I like like imagine yeah. like going to a chest and finding like strike like like ooh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like it would just feel so good. They, oh man, I would love that. All right. But, yeah, it is what it is. I guess hopefully they like do a better job at making the player feel rewarded. I also just again would like more puzzle stuff because they the 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 chests in Kingdom Hearts Three aren't really. That it's more that they're time consuming to get all of them rather than being difficult. Uh, there's not really a lot of like puzzle stuff going on, which I would prefer more of. I'm not saying like have every world be like Wonderland necessarily, but no, just <laughs> no, no, just make things a little bit more interactive. Right, because like they they had spades of that in, like in a couple of places, but it's yeah. just like there's not enough. They really needed that more of that. Ex yeah, pretty much. Like, it's like we had, like, the Forge or whatever in um, Olympus like, to make, like, a new weapon for Goofy. That was cool. Yeah, I want more stuff like that. Like, Olympus starts starts the game off, like, so strong. Right. It's just, like, and then, like, uh, like, there's a couple of things like that in, like, Toy Box. Maybe a few, maybe one or two things in Pirates, even. Yeah. But there's, but it just makes you want more. Yeah, pretty much. Because, like, I'll yeah. admit, like, uh, like, yeah, like, Kingdom Hearts 1, it's just, like, uh, it's, like, especially using that even as, like, like, as using that to compare every game onwards, it's, like, you could tell, like, everything is trying to take bits from that. Yeah. But, it, it, but like, 3 didn't take enough. Yeah. Pretty much. I do but, feel like they're like, at least on the easy. right track. I feel like they're at least on the right track with freeze level design, but it still has a ways to go, I think. All right. Yeah, I, I was like, I, I, I'm satisfied enough with the game as it is, yeah. but it's just like, there's nothing inherently wrong with it. Like, by itself, it's fine. Yeah, that, that basically sums up how I feel about Kingdom Hearts 3 in general as well. Like, there's nothing really wrong with it, but I, when I like just think about just l these individual parts of the game, I think oh this could have been better, like this could have been handled better, like I, I I'll give yeah. it I'll give I, I I will give it a thumbs up, but when I think but when I try but when I have to think about it as like this as like you know Kingdom Hearts three as like where it is in the series, I kind of like that thumbs up kind of like slowly drift if you will. Yeah, it's. Mm. Like it's never gonna go down, but it's definitely yeah. but 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 you kind of think about it. I still think overall it's a very good game, but it's all it also has like just some of some. I wouldn't say super glaring flaws, but they they're still flaws nonetheless. Um, and it's it can be kind of hard to ignore them sometimes. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, I don't know, I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like this game is more exhausting to play than, like, the other ones, just because of how big the worlds can be, and after a point that just kind of gets exhausting. I don't I'll know if that's just I'd me. Rather play this. I, I, I still rather play this than, like, um, like, Chan Memories, or, Oh like, yeah, no uh, question. <laughs> or... Or like even some of like the other Osaka games, because like yeah, it 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 does overall feel better to play. Yeah, I I would agree with that. I do also f I I also feel like the general like game design with um like enemies bosses are like way better. It's there's still some issues like sometimes bosses kind of just ignore you a lot of the time, uh, so that's kind of weird. I don't particularly care for that. I, f I feel like... I don't know where, where I'm going with this, but... Mm. Yeah, they s it's still not perfect, but it, it is, like, a massive step in the right direction, especially with, again, with the Remind stuff. Like, Remind <laughs> alone, like, elevates this game, like, so much. Not from just the abilities, but just the, the new bosses and the forms you get and everything. 
Like, I... If Osaka, it, the, the Osaka team can make, like, bosses that are that well-designed, I want that kind of stuff for, the, for, for, like, the whole game. And I'm not necessarily saying make every boss a Dea boss. Like, that would be stupid. But... Yeah. <laughs> but I mean more make the make every boss with the quality of those bosses uh, if you will like that i feel like that would be great right and uh yeah remind's great I just, yeah <laughs> i try to think of what else that's the main stuff i mean i i, I mean the gummy ship i guess is over. oh yeah yeah i don't really have too much to say about the gummy ship but I guess it, it's a good in between, but yeah, yeah. I, I do prefer the uh, the shoot 'em up, just the plain shoot 'em up bits in two. Yeah, I feel like I still prefer the stuff in two more because I feel like it's more intense. Like I, I, I don't feel like the um, the um, uh, gummy ship like uh, attack missions or whatever you call them, like the enemy rushes ever get as intense as the ones in 2. I, I, I do like that it's like a happy medium between 1 and 2's design. Um, and like exploring like exploring yeah. space is, fu is, is fun for a while. I feel like there could have been a bit more to, it to find at least, but it's probably the best well, like yeah, you finished, you finished. No, I was just gonna- I, I feel like- I feel like it's the best realized version of the gummy ship, even if it's still not necessarily my favorite part of the game. Yeah. I don't think it ever will be, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite part about Kingdom Hearts 3 was the gummy ship. <laughs> That's my favorite part of any Kingdom Hearts game, is, is flying around the gummy ship. Yeah. <laughs> Oh god. Wait, waiting for somebody to actually say that. <laughs> I wonder if there's someone who actually thinks that. Probably is. Probably someone. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I have to say about that. I, I mean, it's fine. Like, I, I like the fact that you can just ignore most of it and just fly to the worlds if you want to. So I do right. like... Uh, you, huh? Oh, sorry, I was yawning. Oh. Oh, yeah, I was just gonna say, say I like... I like the fact that the gummy ship feels the le the least um, intrusive of the numbered games, because you know in one you had to fly to all the worlds manually, and uh, like after that you can use the like the warp gummy, but you do have to do a lot of like long flying stuff. And KH two you you obviously have to go through all the uh, like doorways and whatnot, but with free you you can ignore most of the like fluff i guess you can just fly to the worlds and sometimes you might have to fight a boss but they don't tend to be that difficult anyway and the only time you really have to do much of the gummy ship is the bits before keyblade graveyard so i like the fact that they made it more optional this time so that's nice and you're, yeah, it's really that and just if you really want ultima yeah so, you know, I I do feel like this is the best, like, blueprint for the gummy ship going forward. Um, so, yeah, I... It... For the next... Ga well, I don't even know... I, I don't even know if the next game is going to have, like, a gummy ship kind of thing, considering, like, the state of the story. <laughs> so there's probably going to be a different kind of, like, world travel system going on. But... You know, I well, guess, who knows? Yeah. yeah. I had, and this is kind of going off track, I guess. But one, <laughs> one I did, I heard someone, someone have for Kingdom Hearts Four is like, what if you enter worlds like entering Hundred Acre Wood, like you just access it through something in Quadratum itself? <laughs> I think that would be kind of interesting. Hmm. But uh, I guess we'll see with that. Is there anything else to talk about? Uh... I feel because like overall, it's... Because overall, the final thoughts are just like... 
it's a good game, but it, it, it like in pretty much like most most of its aspects. But it just needs to, it it just needs a little bit more. Yeah, I'm pretty happy overall with the world selection. I guess. Oh right, yeah. A, I, I mean, there's not much to really okay. say about that specifically, but yeah. Besides the fact that the Pixar stuff is is probably is easily the best stuff. Yeah, and I I do like the fact that Toy Box is now like given the. Like what? What's going on with this? With like Yazora and whatnot? That's now like one of the most important like worlds in the series. <laughs> uh, oh god, so that's that's funny, I guess. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Know. I I probably wouldn't say it has my favorite world selection, but it's it's. I'd say it's pretty good overall. Uh. There's not much else to say about that. <laughs> um, what, about, what about music? What, where would you where would you rank the music in this game compared to the others? Music. Um. Well, that's kind of hard. Yeah. You know, I like like. A lot of the remixes of, of like, old tracks, I think. Oh, no, the, yeah, the remix, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I'm trying to think of the original music more so than the remixes. Yeah, because, like, when I think of, like, the original tracks, I feel like they aren't, I feel like they might be the most, like, unmemorable in the series that might be, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I was going to say in the series, because, like, the ones that are really good are really good, like, uh, Toy Boxes and uh, Monstropolis. Oh, yeah, I love Monstropolis' battle theme. Oh, I also just have a good general memory of like the main like over the main Monsters Inc. part of uh, the Monstropolis. That one has like a nice little like like whimsy to it. Yeah. Like. I yeah. think. Yeah. I think Arendelle probably has one of the more memorable like battle themes in terms of the Disney movies. Hmm. Because uh, it has it, that's just like one of the ones I think about in terms of the Disney movies because like uh. The pirates one is nice, but it does not beat he's a pirate. Yeah, you can't beat that. <laughs> <laughs> they Hell I mm. Hell I'd even argue the MIDI in Kingdom Hearts 2's like original was better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the little but, although that's more so memorable for the whole like <laughs> 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 the, the little dudes are trying so hard. <laughs> yeah. Oh god, I love it. Then, yeah, I mean, the, it's so yeah. bad, it's great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, the music's good, but like, yeah, the remixes been, are yeah. easily the best part, though. Yeah, that's especially the, if we, especially if we put Remind in, into consideration. Although, like, yeah, that said, like some of like the original like uh, main boss tracks, like something like Gozora's battle theme. That's like that's really good stuff. Yeah. Um. It's yeah. It's weird because. When I think of uh, Kingdom Hearts 3's soundtrack, I just, I mainly think of the remixes, and yeah, all of that stuff is really good, I especially really like the remix they have for Tension Rising that plays in Corona, like, that's, like, that stuff is really good, but when I think, oh, um, yeah. Oh, but probably the bit, probably one of the best songs is, like, it's like a remix and not a remix, is, like, the, 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 uh, the Nort Court theme. <laughs> Yeah, it has the, like, Ansem, Zemnus, and Young Xehanort's theme in one, like, that, I, I don't think that was, like, done by Shimamura, I think that was someone else, but I, I feel, I think I remember hearing that, like, she, she heard that and, like, almost cried, because <laughs> it was just so good. He approved. Yeah, because, like, that was just so well done, and it, yeah, that, that fight is definitely one of my favourites. It, like, favorite. It's one of my favorite like story bosses in the series. And right. I I just love how, like. It's a nice send off for those three like villains. I think. Right. <laughs> I still I still think it's funny how it's just like, and and like secret darkness and some. It was great being a Hiriku. Um. Uh. Zenness. Zenness. All melancholy. Young Xehanort, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like, screw you guys. <laughs> I love it. 
<laughs> I I mean this is really funny. Yeah. This I mean it's, it's also f funny as well I guess because I think I think Young Zeno is meant to be like in his like mid to late teens. So you <laughs> you probably would expect him to like do something like that. Um <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> It's <laughs> true, you guys. <laughs> I'm going home. Yeah. Pretty much. Like, yeah, but just in terms of the music, like, I mainly just think of the remixes. Like, some of the original tracks are pretty good too, but most of them kind of just go over my head, and I feel like that's more... That happens more often than not. Like, it's fine in the moment, but when I think back to specific tracks, they don't do too much for me sometimes. I don't mm. know. It's it's yeah. weird. Like this this game has a lot of like ugh, I don't know. I don't know how to say it. It's good music in the, it's good in the it's better in the moment really than it is yeah. like over, overall. Yeah. Like when it when it's good it's really good. But I don't think it's as as consistent as like a lot of the other games. Like even I probably argue even Dream Drop Distance has a stronger soundtrack. Oh no, Dream Art doesn't have a stronger soundtrack. I can remember a good number of those songs, even like boss yeah. games. Yeah, right. The especially by the end game, like that, the music in that game slaps. <laughs> uh, like even like yeah. the early stuff is really good. Like, um, what what's the word called? Uh, the City de Cloche, or what? However you pronounce it. Uh, like the music in there is like really good. You can just say Hunchback if you need Hunch, to. Hunchback, yeah. Yeah, and like the grid. Uh, I, I like I like the um sound of the grids like music as well. And Right. Yeah. I, I feel like I that, can you remember yeah. the very simplistic beat of the battle theme. Yeah. I feel like overall my favorite soundtrack is still two overall, just because I feel like that game has like the most consistent highs. But I feel like again, when free is good it's really good. I'd say that free has the like the highest highs, but it doesn't doesn't have as many if that makes sense. High, yeah, high, highest highs, but like too many lows. What? Yeah. I think that's extensively it, though. I I can't really think of much else to say. Like, we pretty much just said everything I we think, needed uh, to. I think when our, when, I guess there's like one more thing I will say about like overall about Kingdom Hearts Three is like I need <laughs> yeah. a reason to play the game. Not really. That's a good point. Yeah, because yeah, I. Draining. Yeah, dra I before. Yeah, because I, I feel like it's a lot easier for me to, like, pick up one, two, or even, like, Burp I Sleep or Dream Drop, just because it feels le less like I'm going, like, it feels less, um, demanding, I guess. Right, because, like, I could play Kingdom Hearts 1, if you ask me to, I can probably do a good run, like, right now. Yeah, the only exception I'd s the, well... Two exceptions to this, I'd say, would be Chain of Memories and uh, and Days, because those games like drain me like no one's business compared to, like compared to Free. They're also drastically different games. Yeah, that's what makes it like they like, makes it harder because yeah, I definitely play Free over those just because of the of the nature of them. It's, right, it's, but yeah. yeah, but like it really isn't that good when. It, like I had to force myself to get through it. Yeah, it's it's weird because I I still do like free more than the other Osaka games, but I feel like I'd still play BBS and Dream Drop before going back to free, just because it's those games are a lot easier to digest. I feel uh, like obviously they yeah I... they have their issues that we that we mentioned numerous times, but I feel like they're they're shorter length and. Um, general design just makes it easier to go back to them, I guess? I don't know. It's weird. It, it, yeah, it's weird. It's like, cause 3 is a better game, but the others are just a more replay value, I feel like. Yeah. Um, I mean, for us, anyways, because I, I know yeah. there's some people who who can actually, like, uh, it's like I know, because, like, seeing stuff like those styling on, vid on videos, like, you could tell that they've 
those people like really like the game or willing to go to that length to practice. Yeah, like if it, if the um, I don't know what I was, what I was, what I was gonna say, uh, <laughs> um, but <laughs> yeah, it is what it is, I guess. I again, I do, I do think free is the better game, and I, I, I enjoy it more than the like BBS DDD and all that other stuff. But it's just, I just find it harder to go back to for some reason. And, like, I really enjoy stuff like the Remind uh, bosses and whatnot. And, you know, there's, there's points of the game where it rivals even 2, in my opinion. Like, 2 is obviously still my favourite. Um, but I feel like, I don't know, 3 is just such a weird game, man. <laughs> yeah, all it could really do is hope that 4 is... It improves on what didn't work. Yeah, the thing that excites me the most is the fact that Kingdom Hearts 4 could potentially end up being uh, Osaka's like, Kingdom Hearts 2 in terms of just just how much it improves. And um, uh, I, would I would love to see that because, again, they're, they're on the right track with this game. They just have some like things to figure out. Right, but right now we're just on a wait and see kind of mentality. Pretty much. So, yeah. I think also kind of actually kind of scary when you think about it. Yeah, I'm at least like Kingdom Hearts Three going up to release was very scary because like we knew like the games that Osaka team like has made, so it was kind of worrying if they would actually be able to make a number like make a number title that can like hold the legacy of being called Kingdom Hearts Three, um, and I feel like. As much as we've, like, said that how there's, like, issues here and there, I do f still feel like they did a pretty good job overall. Um. Mm. But yeah, uh, hopefully 4 ends up being a lot better. That's all I can really hope for. Right. <laughs> Man, we're gonna, and we're gonna have a talk a bit, a bit more once we... And the thing is, we can't really talk too much about Kingdom Hearts 4 until we actually complete Mel until we actually get the Melody of Memory. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just find it like kind of crazy that w there was like such a long time period where like we never we didn't know if like Kingdom Hearts 3 was ever gonna come out, <laughs> and we're living in a timeline where not only is free out, but <laughs> we're in it's a been like three. It's been yeah, it's been like three years since, or so since the game was like released and. We already get, and we we got the announcer for Kingdom Hearts Four. <laughs> yeah, that just feels so weird. Like, I was expecting at least one more, quote unquote, side game. I don't know what I don't like calling them side games because they really aren't. But I don't and know. What, I don't. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what you'd well, really call what, them. What feels more comfortable to say? What feels more comfortable to say? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I was expecting at least non, one non -number. more. Non number. <laughs> yeah, non numbered game, because <laughs> like every game is pretty much is pretty much just as important like Nomura doesn't really see see them as like side games he sees like every game as just a, just as important and you can really really tell with how much like added lore and stuff is in like Burp by Sleep Dream Drop and all that like if you <laughs> if you skip out on any of the games you're gonna be lost but yeah yeah I was expecting at least one like one game before four, but I guess I guess not. Uh, but yeah, we'll we'll definitely talk more about that matter to your memory. I don't know that is there anything else to add about three? I've, I'm pretty sure we said everything. I'm trying to think if there's anything else about three. Uh, would mm, I guess the mm. there probably is something that we're just forgetting about it. I mean, I I guess Lucky Emblems and the cooking stuff is a thing, but I don't really have much to say that is, about that it. That just more so adds to the exploration than anything. Yeah, I... I yeah, can... and the cooking is more just so like a thing that I, I can live without. I can, I, I can, like, keep, but, like, I'm also just, like... I can... Whatever. Yeah, I can live with or without them. I I don't particularly care either way. I feel... I feel like I probably would prefer overall that that stuff would be... A KH3 thing specifically, and like, like KH4 just does its own thing, but I wouldn't be opposed to that stuff coming back. But right. yeah, that's pretty much it. I can't really think of anything else to say. Either. So, I guess with that, um, 
I guess that's finally the end of the Kingdom Hearts free playthrough that like this took way too long to finish <laughs> for yeah. ver various reasons. But yeah, that's pretty much the end of it. In, t in regards to Melody of Memory, I don't know when we'll end up doing that, but consider considering the nature of that game, it's going to be a lot more like casual than like this game was. We're I feel like it'll be the best time for us to just generally talk about the series um, and just, I don't know, just casually do that. We'll definitely have uh, some other people in there. We'll try and get Nick and maybe some others, uh, but we'll see what happens. And then, um, yeah, <laughs> I don't really. Hear. That's pretty much it. I got, I've got nothing else. I can't think of much either. So, yeah, thanks for watching uh, Kingdom Hearts, the Kingdom Hearts Free LP, and uh, we'll come back eventually for Melody and Memory, and eventually Kingdom Hearts Four, I guess. So. Yeah. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye.